Hello, Dr. Martoni here, and I uh, have talked to many people that have had the coronavirus. I also know some people that the coronavirus has been fatal to. So I wanted to record this video to let people know that it is uh, why it, it is super important to really to prevent the coronavirus from going deep into your system really your how you treat it once you get ill or you get sick plays a critical role at how deep it can go and let me explain viruses are like this they want to replicate themselves and what is going to cause a potentially fatal response is that you know it replicates itself enough where you have an overreaction to your immune system. So for instance, let's say you are, you, you are going to, um, you have a virus, and that virus, before your body is able to control it, is only, before your body controls it, only makes a thousand copies. Then your body controls it and gets rid of it. You're out, you don't even know that you had it, you were subsymptomatic, boom, gone. Let's say that that virus now makes a million copies because you're immunosuppressed, you're not sleeping well, or you travel a lot, or you have some underlying you know, condition, whatever it may be, and it makes a million copies. Well, now you're going to elicit an immune system reaction that is going to be, because it is a virus, similar to a common cold. Um, and then what, what, what becomes, where it becomes potentially fatal, and because this, this virus loves the lung tissue, and it overload in the in the in the immune system reaction, um, it, it really destroys the lungs and causes fluid in the lungs. Is when it goes, let's say, from a million to two million copies. Then what happens is this virus has taken over, and and your body in its in its defense to to get rid of it destroys the lungs, right? And then that's where the problems coming in. Well, how do you prevent the virus from going from 1,000 copies to 1 million copies to 2 million? And these are arbitrary numbers. These are just to simplify what, um, what happens. Well, the way that you do it is you've got to be proactive. First off, you want to do all the things that I'm telling you. You want to you know, get sleep. You want to get more rest and stay hydrated and eat well. Well, if you didn't do that, you're stressed you know, with living in fear, which is one of my big things, when you live in fear, you suppress your immunity and you get sick. The difference between the regular corona and this form of corona is this one's more virulent. It is much more difficult for your body to control because it, it, it replicates itself more rapidly. So you have to, so you have to be very, very conscious. You have to be very conscious on on how you treat yourself when you get sick. And the signs of when you get sick, uh, I'm going to go over, and then how you treat yourself each way really could make the difference between a potentially fatal reaction and a, uh, and a common cold reaction, right? Because people are having both. So here's the deal. When you get sick, there is a denial phase. And in, in just to, I just want to actually put it out there, the people that actually have gotten it, and they, were, they were social distanced. So unfortunately, I believe that it's a matter of time before everybody's exposed to this. Uh, but when you get sick, I call it the denial phase. And the problem is with this denial phase is we're going into allergy season. And the first line of defense to the immune system, and the first way that you'll feel that you're sick is you feel run down. Uh, run down in the fact that you're not getting enough sleep, your eyes are burning in the morning, and you get a scratchy throat. Very similar symptoms to having, a, um, having a, an allergy reaction. So that's kind of the issue. When, when they went back and they looked at, uh, when they originally said that they were asymptomatic carriers in, in the World Health Organization went back and they reviewed them, they found that 80% of everybody that they said were asymptomatic didn't, this is very important, they didn't consider themselves sick, so they said they were asymptomatic, but they still had symptoms. And those symptoms were body aches, slight elevated core temperature, right, and, and, a, and a sore throat and headaches. 
those are all part of what I call the denial phase, the, the reaction to a virus. And this is so important, especially with this coronavirus, how you manage yourself during that denial phase. Listen, if you're having an immune system reaction, whether you think it's virus, whether you think it's uh, an allergy, just consider yourself sick. I tell every one of my patients that. And do the same things. If you want to decrease, I know we're talking about virus, but if you want to minimize your allergies, get more sleep. Your immune system works so much more efficiently when you're sick, I mean, when you, when you get sleep. So what do we do? So typically when somebody has a common cold, they're like, oh, I'm going to work this. I'm going to exercise this thing out of me, right? I'm going to still wake up early. Oh, it's just a cold. I'm just going to fight through it. And then they, they, they wake up early. They sacrifice their sleep. They exercise. Now that, that cold, is, let's say, it gets a little worse. And then they elevate their core temperature. Meanwhile, in the background, a cold, a cold is a virus. And it's replicating itself inside of you. The thing with the cold is your body can control it a little bit more efficiently than, let's say, this coronavirus. This thing's replicating itself tenfold faster than a regular cold is. So when you, if you're managing this like you, if you're managing when you get sick like you do a regular cold, cold, this thing can get ahead of you. So now let's look at the next step. So usually the core temperature elevates. The reason why your core temperature elevates is because your body is trying to fight the virus. It your body's immune system works more efficiently at a higher temperature. Your body's function, as far as everyday life and going around, your body, when, you're, when you have an elevated core temperature, wants to sleep. It runs you down. We, as, as you know, fast-paced people, we don't like that. So we take a Tylenol or we take a an, an non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. We bring down our temperature. What does that do? That makes you feel better, but boom, 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 Replic that virus is replicating. You are now chasing that virus deeper. So it's like, woohoo, yeah, forget about you. You are, you're feeling good, you're exercising, which you're already worn down, and then you're, um, then you're taking an aspirin to bring down. You're feeling better, but in the background, this thing's growing deeper. Then the next thing, that sore throat goes away, bang, it goes right into the sinuses. And now what will happen is, is people will start... You'll start blowing your nose really hard. And what does that do? I used to give myself sinus infections every single, every single year because I was a blower. I wanted to get it all out of me. Well, that now causes another problem where now what you do is you're jamming all the stuff up into your sinuses. And what do you potentially give yourself? A sinus infection. Well, holy mackerel, what do we do when we take, have a sinus infection? <laughs> we take an antibiotic. What does an antibiotic do? It destroy, it gets rid of the bacteria, but it destroys the gut in our GI tract, which suppresses our immune system. So now we chase whatever we have even deeper. Now the last phase of the cellular mediated response is that typically a lot of people will go through your lungs. So at the end of the, the, the congestion, <coughs> sometimes we get a little cough. Oh, it's in my chest. Oh, green stuff coming up. Oh my God, it went down to my chest. Oh, you should see this garbage that's coming up. And it will all drain down. People think it's draining from their nose, but it isn't. It's actually fluid up in their lungs. So now what's happening is you're coughing this stuff up. Now what do we do in that case? Well, in that case, now sometimes we have to go on an inhaler, nebulizer. Those are non -steroid, Those are steroids, and those further suppress our immunity. So if we treat this like a common cold, the treatment of it when we're, when, we're, when we're interfering at very specific areas along the way, this potentially could be a serious infection for you. Now, if, once you get sick, whether it's with corona or whether it's just sick alone or whether you start to feel your sore throat, these are the things that you can do in order to boost your immune system along the way. Okay. So first thing, first sign of a cold, when you first get a cold, if you are concerned with your immune system, you're concerned with, listen, I'm sick, I'm run down. The, the best thing, top of the tier, get more sleep. Slow down, rest. If, you, if you're coughing and you can't get some sleep, sleep slight, sit slightly sitting up. If you can take a nap during the day, take a nap during the day. And then a vitamin that you can take during this time in, you know, arguably there's more of it outside, and then you can take vitamin C, high dosage, three oranges a day, right? Take a lot of vitamin C, Google it, 
They're, uh, they shipped a bunch of vitamin C over to, to, to China to, um, to, to help uh, with the, with the uh, virus, to, 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 to boost your immune system for the virus. Vitamin D, get your skin exposed to the sun. Those are two really good things that you can do. When you run down, you, you take a nap, get outside, get your skin exposed to the sun, or take a vitamin D supplement. You can take as much as 50,000 IUs um, at, at 50,000 IUs uh, once a week. Um, you, you can do something like that and then just take more vitamin C. Now, what's another way that you can do to boost your immune system? Remember we talked about the first thing that people do when they start to feel an elevated core temperature is that they take an aspirin to bring it down. Well, the problem is with that is your immune system gets suppressed and then the virus is going rampant. It's making so, much, so many more copies of itself. But what you can do, hot, hot shower get warm that's why we get chills our body wants to be warm if you if your body has to fight listen to this to keep itself at 98 degrees or now 99 degrees or 101 degrees and you're wearing short sleeves you are you are wasting any no you're not determining the the temperature your body is you want to help it. You're wasting an enormous amount of energy that suppresses the immune system to, to heat up the body. It takes a lot of energy. That's why we lose weight when we're sick. It takes a lot of energy to keep the core temperature high. Help your body out. The more that you understand the process and the more that you help it out, the more energy that you give to the immune system and, and, and the less the body takes to survive, it, the, the better off you're going to be. So bundle up, wear long sleeve shirts, get warm, wear three blankets when you're sleeping, right? I know it's, sometimes you get really hot and, you, and you're sweating, but your body wants to be warm because you, you, you actually, your immune system works at a high, at better at a higher temperature. I take it now in prevention, or I do it anyways during the winter time, I'll take a steam room in the morning and I'll take a steam at night. I love to help elevate my core temperature. On the days that I exercise, I don't because exercise increases your core temperature. These are what you do beforehand. I don't like exercising when you're sick because it takes an enormous amount of energy to exercise and then people just go home and live their normal life and even though they run down, what you do if you want to exercise, exercise and make sure you, you take a nap that afternoon because you have to balance that out. So how we deal with this is significantly important. And then the third, the fourth thing is hydration. Make sure you're hydrated. Actually, I'm going to give you a fifth thing. Hydration is critical. Make sure it's not just hydrated because as you're, if you have a fever, you want to add in electrolytes like magnesium, potassium. You can either eat bananas. You can, uh, you know, uh, they, they make these, uh, make, they make these electrolyte um, mixes. There are different things that you can do for electrolytes. And then um, the, the final, well, in, in the, holy mackerel, I, I can't even remember the thing. Live food. Make sure you're eating live food. Ultimately, we get our energy from the sun, and the more live the food is that you're eating, the more potential energy you get from it. And so that, that one was, is a little difficult for people to explain, but look at this here. So on, on, this, on this point right here, this is a piece of corn that is not organic. See the light that comes from it? That's the aura. It's called Curlon Photography. Now look at this. See how much more energy is from this corn? You are actually getting that energy. The, more, the organic foods when you're eating have a brighter aura. They release, you get more energy from that food. This is a piece of cabbage right here. This is, uh, hold on, wait, how am I doing this here? So this right here is cooked cabbage. This is live cabbage. When you cook food, it breaks it down, and you don't get as much energy from it. Now, look at this. See that right there? That is like, pow, that is like energy in your body. That's olive oil. So so you can look at, like, superfoods and foods that give you more life versus food out of a can. And the, and the, and the healthier food that you eat, the more energy it gives you. And then as a chiropractor, I believe that keeping your spine in line helps boost, it helps improve the function of your nervous system. And when you improve the function of your nervous system, you improve the function of everything, including your immune system. So just to highlight, try not to bring down your fever. I, I, I saw an article that, it, that this thing seems to love Tylenol. That, it doesn't love Tylenol. It just Tylenol brings down your fever. And then what happens is the thing replicates. So make sure you embrace 
that fever, okay? And the, and the danger of a fever is, is if you get dehydrated. So make dehydrated. Make sure you're drinking water. Make sure you get rest. Eat live foods. Um, bundle up so your body doesn't have to fight at keeping it warm. Get yourself adjusted. And vitamin C and vitamin D, those are two great supplements that you can take. Keep Be safe. Keep your family safe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, type them down. No concerns. <laughs> if you have any comments, constructive comments would be nice. I love, I love, I love. Uh, you know, oh, you're doing a great job, Doc. I really appreciate your videos. You know, maybe something like that. Um, you know, I'm trying to do this to, you know, this one video is able to save one life just by teaching people the ins and outs about how the body works and, and, and really in, in encompassing the, in embracing with love, you know, the, the aspect of humanity and that people are in control and you're in more control than you think. And, and how we, hopefully from this, how we think about our health, how we respect our health, hopefully as a society we come out of this um, healthier, happier, and more loving. Thank you so much for staying connected. And please, help me share this message and get this out there. Thank you.